Man, oh man. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this series. This is Avengers vs. the X-Men vs. the Eternals Judgment Day issue number one. This is going to be a six-part miniseries and the biggest Marvel event of the year. And I'm going to go on the record and say that this is probably going to be my favorite event of 2022. Because issue number one is absolutely phenomenal. A story by Kieran Gillen. The artwork is Valerio Skitty. And the color is Marty Garcia. What we have is the Eternals waging war on the X-Men. That is because Druig and some of the others, they are seeing them as deviations. A deviation that has been left unchecked for far too long. Now having the ability of resurrection, this challenges everything that the Eternals are. Now make sure that you guys have subscribed to the channel, you have liked this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we get into issue number one, we are picking up in New York City with Cersei and Tony Stark sitting down having a conversation. And Tony Stark, he's really wanting to know why Cersei is saying that they will be fighting within a couple of days. And she really does beat around the bush, doesn't give up any kind of true answers. This is where we have Phoenix coming into play. This is a surprise attack from the Avengers. The Phoenix Force, Captain Marvel, and Thor taking down Cersei. And that is because the Avengers, they want to bring her in. With all the events that have transpired, they have a lot of questions for the Eternals. At the treehouse, we have Cyclops and Jean Grey. While Cyclops, he quickly goes over how it's weird to see the Phoenix Force as an Avenger. Almost jealous and possessive over the Phoenix Force, believing it belongs to mutants. But he also brushes it off as more of a ridiculous notion that it doesn't belong to anybody. It chooses where it wants to go. Outside of the treehouse, there are many, many humans who are currently protesting everything going on. With the secret out, mutants having a mortality, there are a lot of people that are not happy about this. Taking us over to Krakoa, this is where we have Destiny, Mystique, and Nightcrawler. Up in the top left corner, where it lets us know where we are. This is Krakoa, but it also lets us know the population number. It has never truly given us an exact number on how many mutants are on the island or on Arako, aka Mars. This is signifying that this number is either going to rise or it is going to drop. But right now, Destiny is trying to figure out who they are going to war with. At this point, war is inevitable. Right now, Orcus has already gathered all of its forces, and they are ready to attack. But this attack, this war, it is not coming from Orcus. As she uses her abilities, she is able to hone in on exactly what is coming for them. That is the Eternals. Moving as quickly as possible, they gather all leadership, alerting the Quiet Council, sending Nightcrawler to let the Great Ring of Arako know. Let them know what is about to transpire. With Nightcrawler going with great haste, we are taken to Arako, and we are finally given exactly how many mutants are on this planet, having a population of 1 million, letting them know exactly what is coming for them. As they prepare for battle, Cable has some tricks up his sleeve that he believes is going to take care of any Eternal that comes for them. As Magneto, Storm, Cable, and Nightcrawler all discuss this amongst among one another. Nightcrawler is trying to figure out why the Eternals would attack them to begin with. The truth is, this is inevitable. It is in their very name, Eternals. With other individuals now having this power, having this ability, it challenges the structure of everything. The Olympians had torn down the Titans. Mutants are just the new gods of this world. Now, that's what takes us over to Avenger Mountain. Deep inside Avenger Mountain, inside of a psychic dead room, a place that Cersei is unable to call for help. Cersei letting him know that this really wouldn't help him. She is a world 
class matter manipulator. She could give him a stroke in the blink of an eye. But Cersei does want to hear him out to see why the Avengers have gone through all of this trouble to try and interrogate her. And so Tony, he really just cuts to the chase, letting her know that last month, the Eternals had snuck into Avengers Mountain, trying to do something cosmic. And the truth is, Tony doesn't even really care about the reasoning why. He has done many things that he has had to justify. And sometimes those plans, they go sideways. The only issue is that Thanos arrived on Earth and Earth was also minutes away from destruction. And while Cersei, she may regret this, this makes Tony Stark understand that this was not a mistake. To be honest, that's not even an apology. Tony Stark knows that Cersei is hiding something, not really getting anywhere in this interrogation. This is where we have the Stars and Stripes, Captain America walking into the room. Cersei, once upon a time being an Avenger, Cap wants to give her the benefit of the doubt, trying to figure out why the Eternals are about to go to war. And Cersei really doesn't understand what they're talking about, thinking that maybe this is just a sick joke. This is when it all clicks. Her and some of the others, they had split off from the Eternal Society. They have no idea what Druig has been up to. Cersei letting the Avengers know that it is not her they need to be worried about. As we jump over to Olympia, we have the Eternal Capital one hour earlier. And Druig is making his case for war telling them that their third principle, correct excess deviation. For a million years, this has been their job, to protect this planet from deviants. The only problem is that they miss some, saying that mutant kind and its X gene, it came from deviants. Now colonizing Mars and having the ability of immortality, the deviation would go on forever. And so now it is time to correct it. He has come to ask everybody for approval of the Unimind, being the eternal duty of all of them to correct this deviation. He gets the blessing to use their greatest weapon. And that's what takes us to the exclusion, the prison for Eternals. This is where Uranus is locked up, and Druig has been using his counsel to wage his war on mutant kind. And through dialogue alone, what we see is that Uranus, he thinks that Druig is an absolute bug. He is biding his time, waiting for his opportunity to be free of him. The truth of the matter, Druig doesn't really care about mutant kind. What he is trying to do is solidify his reign as Prime Eternal. Going to war with quote-unquote deviants, believing that this will be the thing to unite all Eternals together and under his rule. But right now, he is giving Uranus one hour. The machine has been coded to return him directly back to his prison. He is sending him to Arako. It took mutant kind one day to build all of Mars and terraform it. We're gonna see the destruction of Uranus the Undying and what he can do in one hour. This is where we jump over to a conversation with Moira and Druig. Moira now being a robot, now aligning herself with Orcus. She is hell-bent on bringing down mutant kind, and she plans to do that with the help of the Eternals. She has come to the Eternals, letting them know that the Five is what they need to target. That is the key to their immortality, as Druig really tries to figure out why she is aligning herself with the Eternals. It's a simple answer. Their interests align. Pro-human, anti-mutant. Moira, on a more personal level, she helped build this utopia. She gave them everything. And then they cast her out of paradise. But this is where the war begins. The Eternals are the first one to make a strike. Taking us to the Quiet Council. The first assault is a mental one. The Eternals, they are a psychic species. And while mutant kind may have some of the greatest minds on the planet, these guys are no match for the Unimind. Committing half of their forces, 
all join together, creating the Unimite. We have psychic warfare kicking off above the island, invisible to the whole world. The point of this initial attack is for some shock and awe. Distract and take out the leadership, cause confusion. They also send in an attack fleet. As the alarm goes off, we have mutants coming in from gates all over the place. Jean Grey showing up, Magic showing up, Cyclops showing up, all of these guys arriving on scene and kicking some eternal butts. Now they could have tried to take out the New York gate. The truth is they have Magic on their side. She can easily open up a portal and be there regardless of the portal being up. Moira also letting Druig know that a handful of X-Men are not necessarily his problem. The island of Krakoa has 200,000 mutants. Various abilities from just having an odor to omega level powers. And then you have Arako, a population of 1 million. And these are very battle-hardened individuals coming from a war-torn existence, battling for centuries. And there is a gate from Morocco to Krakoa. The thing about that, Druig already had a solution for that problem. While he deploys his secret weapon onto the battlefield. On Krakoa, he is targeting the five, trying to take out the five one by one. Jack of Knives is unable to get to hope because Wolverine steps in to interfere, calling Jean Grey, letting her know that they are after the five. They know the secret, they know exactly what the key to their resurrection is. This means that Druig missed his chance to stop resurrection. But the Eternals, they are a very patient lot. Having thousands and thousands and thousands of years, one thing that they do have is patience. This is just one simple battle. And so with the Eternals making their retreat, knowing that they cannot sustain active fighting for too long, we pick up a little bit later at the Arbor. One by one, we are slowly seeing people resurrected. Nightcrawler being able to make it back, saying that they have to bring them back and do it now. Because Arako, it needs its leadership. Cable being the first one to be resurrected, he wants to know what happened. And that is what takes us to Arako. Uranus standing on a field of bones. He had teleported in, and in one hour, he laid waste to everything in sight. Destroying the gates to Earth, disabling the power structure that was established, and leaving behind an arsenal to distract anybody that might be left alive. Uranus does know that Druig's plan had failed, that he was unable to stop the Five, also knowing that Druig is going to have to let him out again. Of course, this is something that Druig is avoiding, because Uranus is his last ditch effort. If all else fails, he will release his quote-unquote grandfather. But right now, he doesn't have to use Uranus. Still having a trick up his sleeve. Still having the entire armory of Uranus. He is going to deploy the Hex. Taking us over to Avenger Mountain and seeing or hearing a broadcast from all over the world. Word is out that Krakoa was attacked. And Druig is giving a message to the people of Earth. Letting them know that mutant kind, they are a danger. One that has been left unchecked for far too long. Apologizing for letting this go for so long. He is assuring them that they will protect them from mutant kind. But also letting them know not to fear the towering death machines that are emerging on the western seaboard of the United States. Because these are no death machines. They are the Hex. They are Eternals. Letting civilians know that they need to head inland. Because things are about to get very, very messy. Captain America calling the Avengers. They are trying to figure out what their next course of action is going to be. Knowing that Cersei is still hiding something from them. Tony Stark getting some alerts. Somebody has come into Avenger Mountain. That somebody is Makari and Ajax. And having with them Sinister. Recently kidnapped, they plan to use him to create a new god. That is why they have come to Avenger Mountain. 
these two Eternals letting the Avengers know that they do not come here to fight. They see two possible outcomes. Eventually, all the lives will be rendered nothing but dust, because this is a holy war born of holy scripture. A god can rewrite that scripture, bring a end to the war altogether. And so what they want from Tony Stark is to help build a god. Tony Stark wanting to get on board with this, but his question is how do we build a god in a couple of hours? But they have all the ingredients to make a new god, because Avenger Mountain itself is a dead celestial. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. There is a lot to unpack here. I think we're gonna start off with Uranus the Undying. Sending him to Araco was probably the smartest move that Druid could do. Once having a population of 1 million, who knows the true amount of damage he did in that one hour. And amongst all of those bones, is it possible that Magneto is dead? Because he no longer has the ability of resurrection. He had crushed his back up and he had told the Great Ring he has no intention of coming back from Scarlet Witch's heaven. Will he break that vow and return because of the Eternals attack? Now this may be only a six issue miniseries, but there are tons of issues that are going to tie into this from a Mortal X-Men to almost every other single title that is coming out of the X-Men line. Using the Unimind was an absolutely brilliant idea. That power together, it put down every single one of the psychic users on Krakoa took them off the board, more or less, because they were too busy fighting on the astral psychic plane. This gave him the opportunity to go after the five. Now knowing that this information is known by everybody, the Quiet Council is going to have to figure out some kind of contingency. This may be what Charles Xavier Black Box Project is. I'm glad that they finally let us know how many mutants were on Araco. The thing is, they don't have resurrection, and we have no idea how many people Uranus had killed, but we can easily assume that it's going to be in the tens, maybe even hundred of thousands. In my opinion, the Eternals just effed up. They messed up so badly. Araco has been begging for war. Many of them have wanted to go back to Ameth and continue their warlike lifestyle. Druig just gave everybody an enemy. Mutant kind uniting under one banner. Exactly what Druig wanted for the Eternals. This is what is happening with mutant kind. Not only that, the Avengers are more than likely going to be siding with all mutant kind, knowing the truth or at least most of the truth of what's going on. And it appears that some of the Eternals, like Icarus, Cersei, Ajax, and Makari, they will all be assisting mutant kind. Still, nobody knows the secret that every time an Eternal dies, it costs one human life. When this information comes out, there is a good chance that a lot is going to change because of it. I have a feeling though this whole event, we are going to see Uranus break free and it is going to be everything versus him and his army, versus his arsenal. We have also not seen Omega Sentinel or Nimrod. Orc is probably more than well aware of everything the Eternals have planned because they have partnered up with Moira, who has partnered up with the Eternals. Mutant Kind's enemies are gathering at the gates. They have made the first strike. And this is about to get freaking bloody. Now, if you want to get caught up on everything that has been happening with the X-Men, with the Eternals, everything that led to, a, to our Judgment Day, be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. I have playlists set up that is going to get you caught up on everything, bringing you up to speed where we are today. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the Super Thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel, and every single little bit helps Helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.